Welcome back traders. The market bounced into tomorrow's CPI data point. Today we're going to discuss price action, the upcoming report, and some stocks setting up into that event. We had a nice bounce across all of these headline indices with the ARK Innovation ETF leading the market up 1.9%. However, our TLT long bond ETF did show some relative weakness and it closed at the low end of its day's range. Our trend model flipped to a positive one reading and this could have had something to do with these lighter than expected consumer inflation expectations. US consumer inflation expectations for the year ahead declined to 5.2% in November, which was the lowest since August of 2021. That is a pretty dramatic decline, as you can see by these data bars over here, which show every month over month reading. Oddly enough, however, this move was not confirmed by the VIX, which ended up closing up 9.51%, and finished at the 25 level right on the dot. Our 10 year treasury futures did put in a pretty weak daily candle. They finished down 0.23%. And it's pretty clear that the stock market is saying one thing, the bond market saying another, and the volatility market is also agreeing with the bond market. The S&P 500 had a really nice extended range green candle and we blasted right through this 20 day simple moving average like a knife through butter. Zooming into the hourly chart, we clearly broke out of this weekly value area and we sprinted to the upside. The NASDAQ also blasted through that 20 day simple moving average and finished above the monthly point of control at 11,751 spot five. The Russell 2000 still looks pretty weak. We're getting some positive action at this 50 day simple moving average but we are still trading below the 20 day SMA. And the Dow Jones blasting above that 20 day SMA and trading right up to this monthly value area high. Our top performing sectors today were the biotech group of 2.51%, software of 2.39%, and transportation of 2.78%. The Chinese equities, which had been showing such nice relative strength, had a pretty sizable pullback today down 2.9%. It's great to see this upward movement in the market and the reclaiming of key technical levels. However, we do have a binary event tomorrow that is the CPI. This data point is going to come out at 8.30 a.m. The consensus estimate is for the year-over-year -year rate to come in at 6.1%, which is going to be a deceleration from the prior reading of 6.3%. The PPI that we just received a few days ago did come out a little bit higher than the expectation, so I'm keeping an open mind as to how this CPI report is going to look tomorrow. As of right now, for Wednesday's Fed meeting, there's a 71.1% chance that we're going to get a 50 basis point rate hike, but that probability actually declined from a 78.2% probability in the prior session. If the CPI comes out piping hot, that could tip the scale in favor of a 75 basis point rate hike. But if it comes out anywhere near the consensus estimate, I believe we're going to end up getting that 50 basis points. Now here's where the plot thickens team. This data is via sentiment trader. Traders have never spent so much on expectations for a crash. Last week, all the traders across all US exchanges bought to open $4.20 in put options for every $1 in call options. It does appear that investors are hedged up to their eyeballs and there's a lot of pent up energy heading into tomorrow's CPI as well as Fed Wednesday. If these two catalysts come and go and we don't end up getting some cataclysmic move in the market to the downside, there's a lot of put option players that might have to cover their positions and that could lead to a squeeze higher in the market. For this reason, we triggered into some Juniper common shares for $32.70. This trading setup was shared with all pristine capital members as part of our weekend watch list. If you're interested in gaining access to the weekend watch list, as well as our active trading discord, visit pristinecapital.net. What I really like about this Juniper setup is we had a really nice tight pivot level to trade against and the tighter you can keep your stop out point to where you entered the stock, the less the stock has to move to the upside to capture a multiple on your risk. The goal for my trading strategy is to capture two reward units per unit of risk on winning trades. But given all the potential curveballs that could come from the CPI report, 
as well as Fed Wednesday, I will likely take a piece of this trade off as we hit the R1 pivot at $33.26. The good thing about trading the common shares versus trading the options is that it's very easy to control the risk. If the stock ends up moving the other way, I'm gonna stop out at $32.10 for a very minimal loss. While I do admit that we find ourselves in a coin flip environment, as really anything could happen into the end of the week, I will say the hero trade is likely to the upside just given all that put option premium we saw. And we are seeing some really attractive stock setups that formed as a result of today's price action. Shift for payments, ticker symbol four, had a really nice breakout today outside of this monthly value area. And Global Foundries, ticker symbol GFS, also had a really nice move through this 20-day SMA. And the move happened on pretty high relative volume as well. SMCI, a leadership stock that appeared to be breaking down at the end of last week, reignited and closed above the monthly value area high. And Las Vegas Sands, another name from our pristine capital weekend watch list, flipped from red to green and closed on the high of the day. Heading into tomorrow's session, I'm gonna make sure that I know where my stops are, I'm gonna take my stops if they hit, and I'm also gonna have a few stocks in my back pocket that I can add to if things resolve to the upside. I could see a lot of traders getting caught flat-footed tomorrow. If they come into the session unprepared for the market to advance, the CPI comes out light, the market has a massive gap higher, stocks run throughout the session and then they go all right i'm gonna flip bullish and buy a bunch of stocks at that point it might already be a bit too late because we're gonna have the fed meeting the following session and if that fed meeting doesn't go according to plan or powell comes out a little bit more hawkish than expected we could end up reversing all of these gains for the rest of the week i think it's much better to miss moves and just say hey i didn't really know what was going to happen long side or short side who really cares then miss moves and start chasing stocks either at blistering highs from the last couple days or as they make new lows. So make sure you eat your Wheaties tomorrow morning and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate your support and we'll see you all next time.